So I'm gonna I'm gonna start this off with a, um, a caveat. I talk really really fast because I'm from New York and it's a disease. Um, so if I'm talking too fast, you can yell out, "You're talking too fast!" And I, I'll be very offended, but I'll talk slower. Uh, <laughs> so I want to talk to you about entities. Okay, Google's entity centricity and its impact on an international SEO and what the hell does that mean? So I'm going to try to explain that. Um, but really what I'm going to try to do is I'm going to try to go into some of the stuff that Ellie was talking about and how Google is looking at things a little bit differently and how your technical this and your SEO, your titles, that don't matter as much. Uh, my name is Morty Overstein. I am the head of marketing at Rank Ranger. We're an all-in-one SEO and digital marketing platform. So if you want to track rank, you want to look into your, com your search competitors, that's what we do. I can talk to you all about my love for sunsets and long walks on the beach, but you don't care. I don't have time. But I will say, by the way, if you want to reach out to me, Twitter's a good way. I'm very responsive on Twitter. So if you have any questions and you can't find me or whatever it is, hit me up on Twitter. OK. So I have a pet peeve. I hate articles that say seven ways to do this, and five ways to do that, and eight ways to do this, and 10 ways to do that. They make me want to throw up. So I'm going to talk to you about a concept, because Google is getting very conceptual. So maybe we should actually talk about how Google actually thinks, as opposed to a strategies that will lead you nowhere. So this is going to be a little abstract. It's going to be a little conceptual, but I'm going to walk you through it, because I used to be a teacher. <laughs> OK, so the concept I'm talking about is entities. Did I skip? Oh, man, I love that slide. By the way, if you know where that quote came from, you get a million dollars. Um, I don't have a million dollars. Where's it from? Anyone? Star Trek. Star Trek what? It's from Star Trek the motion picture when Dr. McCoy gets off the transport. He goes, why is everything we don't know? It's called an entity. Little thing, whatever it is. Um, entities. Google has been entity crazy for the last two years. Okay, Google has analyzed things as entities way before this, but the last two years have kind of been crazy. So with the idea of entities come a lot, a lot of problems. And I want to focus on one particular problem that Google had, sort of walk you through how Google evolved through that and how it brought us to where we are today. And then we'll talk about how it all relates to international SEO. It's a fun circle. OK, so basically what I'm going to do is I'm going to go through a couple of connections, a couple of problems, a couple of things that Google did. We'll take a three hour tour. We'll get stuck in a desert island. And we'll learn a lot of things. Now, before I really get into this, you have to understand one thing. We have to understand a lot of things, but this one too. Day in and day out, we're stuck in you know, the, um, I keep hitting the button. We, <laughs> trigger happy. We get stuck in the day in, the day out of working in the trenches of SEO. We don't really have a larger picture. Okay, but you have to realize that when Google does something, it's very, very methodical. It's thought out for years in advance, part of a, you know, years of strategy and consideration. And so what happens one month, and what happens five months later, they usually connect. There's a path between them. They're not individual events. They're not individual updates. They're part of Google's master plan to take over the world. Okay, so what I want to talk about today is the connection between the mobile first indexing and the CCTL, the update. If you don't know what any of those things are, I will explain them. Okay. First stop on this train. The mobile first index. And that started to roll out in earnest while really being experimented in October, middle of October 2017. I believe I'm bad with dates. But Google confirmed, Gali Ilyish confirmed that Google had been experimenting heavily for the past two weeks with the mobile first index. Now, there's a theory out there, which I very much subscribe to, that the mobile first index is really an entity first index. Now, what does that mean? Well, it means that Google's very, very focused on entities as opposed to the mobile first index being, hey, we're looking at your mobile version of your page, indexing that, and not your desktop version. It was really a new way to look at the web altogether. And that was based on understanding and focusing on entities. And I'll explain. Okay, <clears throat> prior to the mobile first index, we're gonna call the entity first index, Google understood things were related, the knowledge graph. How did it know that? All it had was language, right? Keywords. If I see the word table, then the word chair is usually followed to the next paragraph, it's in the next heading. The word chair is everywhere, so table and chair go together. The problem is that that's really, 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 really inefficient because you have to do that in every language all over again. Every language is its own construct, its own entity, for lack of a better word. So if I need to know that the word table goes with chair in English, I need to know the table goes with chair in Spanish and Russian and French and whatnot as opposed to understanding things the way we do, qualitatively. 
It's a funny thing to consider, but what is a table? I understand what table is. Table inherently relates to chair. Table has this characteristics. Table relates to this thing, relates to that thing. And there's an intrinsic connection between a table and chair. Are we all clear on this? Table and chair go together? It's not complicated. But it's really, really important. Because when you understand things intrinsically, when you understand things that when Google understands that table and chair go together, not based on keywords, not based on language, not based on content per se, well, that's really efficient. Because now it's universal. I don't need to go to Russian and understand that the word keyword goes with the word table goes with chair. I don't need to go to Spanish and understand that table goes with chair. I already know. Table goes with chair everywhere. It's just a matter of finding the right word. It's really in reverse, right? Google now says, well, I already know that a table goes to chair in Russia. I just need to find the word in Russian for table and chair. Okay, it's key, uh, entities, understanding things conceptually, understanding things qualitatively the way we as humans do that Google tries to mimic with AI and machine learning is universal. I don't need to do this over and over again in every single market. But entities are also regional. For example, if I tell you sandwich, okay, when I think sandwich, I think what I've eaten for 10, 10 years in a row every single day, peanut butter and jelly sandwich. Now you're all looking like I'm crazy because no one in Israel eats peanut butter and jelly, am I correct? Yeah, I've been here five years, never seen anybody eat a peanut butter and jelly sandwich. Like, like crazy Americans eat peanut butter and jelly, right? Okay, so when you think sandwich, you think, I don't know, uh, shawarma, blah, 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 I don't know, uh, falafel, whatever it is you think, it's not peanut butter and jelly, correct? Okay, so we have very different understanding of entities based upon region. So entities are universal and entities are regional. So Google's got this new cool thing that it does. It looks and it tries to understand things qualitatively. What is this thing? What does it relate to? Intrinsic relationships between this thing and that thing. Very qualitative, very human-like, big deal. Well, one of the things that it had a hard time with now or a question that a big problem, right? The big problem that Google had was, I understand it, but now how do I express it? Right, I can understand something very simple and not be able to express it and it's worthless. So how Google had, okay, I understand entities, Entities are universal, right? Table, I understand the table relates to chair intrinsically, but how am I able to now show this to, to people doing searches? Enter the CCTLD update. Just two, three weeks after Google really starts experimenting with the mobile first index comes the CCTLD update, country code, top level domain. It's really, it sounds really complicated, it's not. Okay, just, if you're wondering what is the CCTLD update, you just need to know two things for our purposes. One, just like entities, there's a universal element and there's a regional element. Okay, so one of the things that people didn't realize when Google rolled out the CCTLD update two weeks after mobile first indexing, big coincidence, it, it changed everything on the back end. Okay, it used to be the way things work with Google was, little secret, it ran everything in the US first. And it waited, then it experimented, and then it rolled things out globally. Well, during the CCTL, the update, which no one really cares about, uh, Google's data changed how their data centers work. And now that Google has an entity understanding, understands things universally, table and chair are universal concepts, they go together universally, it started to roll things out universally. It said, okay, we don't need to roll things out in America and then in the Spanish speaking countries. For example, surf features used to work this way. Google will make a change of feature snippets. Three weeks later, we'd see all of a sudden, all the Spanish-speaking markets, they would have a chain of feature snippets. There'd be more feature snippets or less feature snippets, whatever. Then two or three weeks later, all the Nordic countries, Sweden, Norway, um, the Netherlands, they would all change. That stopped. Now everything happens all at once. Google rolls things out universally, which makes a lot of sense. It has a universal understanding of entities. It understands table and chair really universally, and it rolls things out universally but it also went local. The CCTL, the update had a, region, a universal element and had a regional element. And what happened was, it used to be, I think Liraz hinted at this, that if you, went, if you lived in Australia and you wanted to see Google's results in America, you would go to google.com and you would see American results. You could see any country in the whole world. All you had to do was enter the country code top level domain, CCTLD. And you can see, if you're, into, if you're living in Japan, you want to see Israel results, you just typed in google.co.il. That stopped. Even if you did that, you would just see your local results, no matter what. And part of that was, is that it used to be, before this, Google had a problem. It would show domains from all sorts of countries and all sorts of on, on one results page. So if let's say you're in Belgium, and in Belgium they speak, in some places, French. 
So if you're in France, you would see a lot of Belgium sites show up in your results page. Google said, that's not good. We want to separate this out. And what the CCTL, the update did was, it said, okay, if you're in France, you're going to see domains that are .fr from France. You're not going to see as many from .be from Belgium. Which, by the way, if you're looking at me like, hey, no, I still see other countries in my search results. Well, let's say, for example, you search for cricket. Not like the bug, like the game with the bat thing, right? The weird bat. Well, I guess all bats are weird to Israelis, but <laughs> if you search for that in America, you get UK results. Why? Because we don't play cricket in America. It's a stupid game. So you get UK results. So it's not universal, but most of the time, Google got far better at showing just domains from your country and not other countries. So what's the connection? Well, OK, so Google has this new entity first understanding its entity focus, and it also made things more local. And then you're able to roll things out universally. What exactly is the connection? Imagine you're Google and you spent millions of dollars trying to understand things qualitatively through AI and machine learning and understand things as entities. What is this thing? Who is this thing? Who is this person? And all the things that are connected to it. And you didn't have a way to show it on the results page. That would be stupid. You just wasted millions of dollars. So Google developed the CCTL, the update, to make sure that if you're in Israel and you search for sandwich, you don't get peanut butter and jelly. You get whatever we eat here. It had to figure out a way to make sure that the entities you were seeing on the results page were the entities that apply to your region. We have a regional understanding of entities. We need a regional way of showing results to make sure that if you're in France, you see the French version of sandwich, not the Belgian version of sandwich. I'm totally oversimplifying this. So think of it like this. There's what we're doing, right? Google is understanding things qualitatively. It's understanding concepts, right? It's understanding table as a concept. And then it's trying to make sure that it shows the right concept to the right audience. Okay, so what the hell am I talking about? Okay. I don't know. I hope I know. So I'm going to show you some examples, okay? Because Google's all about different strokes for different folks, and that is Nancy Reagan. I don't know why she's on different strokes. Um, for example, if you search for Batman, okay, Batman is an entity. Right? If I search for Batman in the US, in the UK, in Israel, and all over the world, I get a knowledge panel. It's that big, long, rectangle thing on the side of the page. Um, and at the top of the knowledge panel is a collage of images, these guys. In Israel, I get one set of images. In, in America, I get some other images. In the UK, I get totally different images. Or um, the disambiguation box. So Google sometimes gets confused what I really mean. So let's say I search for Rangers. Well, did you mean the New York Rangers hockey team? Did you mean the Texas Rangers baseball team? Do you mean Power Rangers? What do you mean? So Google will offer you different results and you can make sure that you pick the right thing. I said, no, 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 I really meant this thing. So let me see results for that. In Israel, in the UK, in the US, when I searched for Batman, I got totally different results. In Israel, Google thought, maybe you meant Batman, who laughs, whatever that is. It's some kind of fictional Batman character. Okay, in America, it said, hey, maybe you meant the 1989 Michael Keaton movie, Batman. The point is that Google said in each market that I searched in, maybe the entity means something different to you than it does in another place. Or take the news box, the top stories carousel. If I searched for Batman, there was all sorts of news stories about Batman. In Israel, in the US, in the UK, I get different results. For example, who here watches Netflix? She's a bunch of liars. Everyone raise their hands. Okay, so the, you know the show The Crown? It's a great show about the Queen of England, whatever. Okay, so in the UK, you get, a, you get a story about someone who plays whatever on the crown being in a new Batman movie. You don't get it in the US or in Israel because you don't give a crap about the queen. So you're like, yeah, OK, this is great. So you're telling me all these different things about images and who cares. Like, there's, it's like so nuanced. I, don't, I run an e-commerce site, you idiot. What does that have to do with anything? I don't show up for entities. OK, well, guess who's coming to dinner? I couldn't say it's already here, like, but I couldn't say guess who's already at dinner. That would just be stupid. But what's here is sites as entities. This is where it gets really interesting. The what the heck is a site as an entity? Got an, an entity, like Thor is an entity. Marlon Brando is an entity. Tom Hanks, the Rolling Stones are an entity. They're a thing, right? Tables are entities. Sites are not entities. Sites are sites. Okay, so one way to understand sites as entities is sites as brands. In other words, um, Google. Anyone know Google's parent company? Alphabet, right? So Alphabet is, so you have Google falls under Alphabet, YouTube, Webmasters, right? Um, Google Home, all these different things fall under the Alphabet umbrella. So when Google sees Google.com, if Google were looking at itself, it would know, okay, Google's part of this larger entity called the brand, called Alphabet. That's one way to understand sites as entities. The other way is much cooler. The other way is that Google is asking, when it looks at a site, who is this site? What's its identity? What's its purpose? What's its characteristics? 
What's its profile? In other words, it wants to qualitatively understand a website the way it wants to qualitatively understand Marlon Brando. So how do we know this? Because that sounds kind of crazy. A site is the same thing as an entity? Like a site's the same thing as a chair? The site's the same thing as, I don't know, whatever movie star or rock star you want to come up with? Yeah, so the third step in all, notice everything's connected. So if Google has a new way of looking at everything. It's looking at anything qualitatively. Everything is an entity. And then it came up with a CCTLD update to make sure that you got the right entity on the right country. So I won't get the peanut butter and jelly sandwich in Israel. I get the, the, the lafa with the, the shawarma and the hummus and whatever. And in America, the peanut butter and jelly sandwich. Okay? The last step is, well, how do we measure if we're doing this right? If we're re-looking at everything and how we're understanding everything, well, how do we know if we're looking at it right? So Google came up with what? Four months after the CCTL, the update came, the first broad core algorithm update, March 2018, the first of these new confirmed updates. Now, there were always broad core algorithms beforehand, but these are new. These are different. First of all, Google started to confirm them. Two, when Google talks about them, it doesn't refer to the ones that happened in 2017 or 16 or 15 or whatever. It only refers to them, the ones starting in March 2018. What we saw is when the new broad core algorithm updates started to happen, well, certain weird things started to happen on the websites. Who remembers the Medic update? Okay. The Medic update was this massive update that hit all these finance and health sites. And one of the things we saw happen was that let's say your site um, had two profiles. Let's say you're a health site and you want to tell me how to lose weight, how to eat healthier, how to grow your hair back. And at the same time, you're trying to sell me something. Like you're, everywhere there's a call to action, or there's a link, or there's a banner ad, or there's whatever to buy a certain powder, right? to buy whatever product that I sell. Well, Google said, are you an e-commerce site? Or are you an informational site? Because you can't sort of be both. And for those sites that had conflicting profiles, where we're saying we're an informational site, but we're really trying to sell you something, like draxx.com, they got slammed, okay, big time. What's more is that Google seems to be getting really good at this. They know who your site is, what the purpose of your site is, what you're supposed to be doing with your site, and if you're not doing it. Because what we saw during the June 2019 core update was, now you would expect during a major algorithm update, sites would what? Lose tons of rankings, right? You go from ranking number four to ranking number 400. Or you go from ranking number 400 to ranking to number two. And that did happen. But one of the things that happened was sites started to jump very small amounts. Um, the average site moved during the June 2019 core update less than one position. In other words, sites moved very, 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 very little up, very little, very, very little down. Why? Because Google started to say, you know what? This is what your site does. And these keywords, these relate to your site a little bit more. So we're going to boost your rankings just a little bit. And then Google said, well, these keywords that you're trying to rank for, that you wrote content for, well, they, they, they're set on, the, on the periphery of what you actually do, so we're going to rank them a little bit lower than before. When you see Google doing things nuanced, it means they understand it very, very well. For example, back in 2016 when RankBrain came out, there were wild rank fluctuations. Now, RankBrain is, what, three, four years old? The movement, the actual movement overall got much, 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 much smaller because Google got better at understanding things. I don't need to make huge adjustments anymore. I can make small adjustments because I understand what's going on. Meaning Google understands who your site is, what your site is supposed to be doing, and what it's not supposed to be doing, what content is relevant to your site, what content is not relevant to your site. Google is profiling your site and trying to understand it qualitatively. And you're like, yeah, who cares? What's the big deal? It's a huge deal. Because if you put two and two together, it becomes a very big deal. So we know that Google can look at entities universally. And Google can understand the entities regionally, like our peanut butter sandwich case, right? So if a site is an entity, that also means that Google has a universal understanding of your site and it has a regional understanding of your site. In other words, your site can have multiple profiles depending upon the region that you're in. What does that mean, practically speaking? It means it's almost like you have to do local SEO at this point if you're doing international SEO. If I'm selling widgets to, a, to New Yorkers, New Yorkers are jerks, New Yorkers are intense, New Yorkers are kind of crazy. I know, because I am one. Okay? Versus selling widgets to, to people in California who are cool, laid back, and nice. You're going, to have to, you're going to have to gear your content, you're going to have to gear your website to each market individually to sell to both markets. Okay? If you are working with international SEO, you need to very, 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 very much know how 
the content that you're writing, how the service that you're offering, how the product that you're offering is related to in each market. Okay, and that might mean doing like keyword research or things like that, but it, it's a totally different concept. In other words, whatever you're doing before is gonna stay the same. You're gonna track your rank, you're gonna do keyword research, but as opposed to just translating your content, and maybe you're gonna change your word here and there, because maybe in Spain they use this word for whatever it is that I sell, or, and maybe in Russia they use this word more. It means thinking way beyond changing a word or two when you translate your content. It means thinking about, wait a second, how does the audience, how does the user, how does the people in this country view, relate to, and think about whatever it is that I'm doing, whatever topic that I'm writing about, or whatever it is that I'm doing, really deeply, really conceptually? How do they view it? What do they relate to it as? How do they think of it? And then building a profile up for each market based upon the different way that it's understood in each place. So like for example, I'm trying to give a good example. Um, let's say you're selling, let's say you're a travel site. Okay, you want, you want to sell, uh, you want to offer um, information on booking a hotel, booking a car, and booking a, um, a flight. So you have hotel, flight, and car. So maybe in Spain, right, that works. You can sell all three different things under the same domain. But maybe that's not a thing they do in Russia. Right? Maybe in Russia, they don't, you don't look for a flight, a hotel, and a car on the same site. No one does that. So when Google sees you do that, they say, you're not a travel site for Russia. No one does that here. Okay? You have to understand how your site is viewed in each market. Okay, the other thing you want to want to do is understand how Google views you. Okay, if I were to ask you who you are, what's your identity, it'd be more than one thing. You can't like, sum it up for me in one word, right? You'd have to break it down in different ways. The same thing with your site's identity. Who is your site? What's your site doing? By the way, you should know in 2018 when they changed the, the quality rater guidelines, there are actually people who rate sites for Google manually. They changed all of the language to talk about main content. Is a site living up to its main content? Is the main content of the site relevant? Is the main, is the main content of the site purposeful? In other words, Google told its quality raters, hey, we want you to profile sites and make sure that whatever a site's doing, whatever it's talking about, is relevant to what the site says that it does. Okay, so one of the things you should do is, is label your keywords, keyword tags. In other words, you have multiple layers to your profile. So you might think, hey, you know what? I'm ranking really well in Spain, I'm ranking really well in France, and I'm ranking really well in Canada. My average rank is great. Overall, I'm number two in every market. I'm awesome. I'm so good. But if you don't break up your profile in different aspects, then how do you know which sub-profile is working? So let's say you're the travel site. And let's say you're doing really well in Russia and you're doing really well in Spain. What I recommend you do is break up your keywords by topic. All of your keywords that relate to hotels, under one label. All of your keywords that relate to dining, under another label. All of your keywords that relate to airlines, under another label, and see how each topic is doing. Because let's say, let's say you're doing really well in every market, but all of a sudden you have hundreds of landing pages for airlines, for flights. And in every market it's working. Spain, France, you're doing a great job. But in one market, let's say Brazil, all of your keywords aren't ranking well. What do you think that is? You have the same technical error in all of your landing pages? That's ridiculous. Okay, what it means is Google saying, for whatever reason, when it comes to airlines, your site's totally inapplicable to the, to the Brazilian market. You, whatever, however it is you're talking about flights, however it is you're referring to airlines, whatever it is you're doing on the page, is not how Brazilians think about airlines. So we're, you're not relevant for flights. So you might have a great profile overall. You might, be wonder, you might be ranking really great overall, but all of these keywords are not ranking, and you're not gonna understand why unless you group them together by topic. I could go into this, there's a million different ways you can go into this and take advantage of the fact that, okay, that Google's looking at my site qualitatively. Who is your site? Is your site doing what it's supposed to be doing? I don't have time to go into all of them, and I can't possibly go into all of them because what you do with your site is totally different. This is why I gave you a concept, because I taught you how to fish, and instead of just giving you the fish. So take the concept and apply it to whatever you want to do, but understand one thing. It's not about links, it's not about titles, it's not about content per se, it's about building up a profile that Google can say, this is what this site does, and it does it well. And I'm done, thank you. <laughs>